Green Stabla, make yourself comfortable. Today we shall tell you about Jorhus, also known as Jotna or the Frost Giants. Jorhus are the firstborn of Emir and progenitors of Aesir. Without them, there would be no Norse mythology as we know it. As all started with Grand Jotun Emir, and we land in fires of eternal Jotun Surt. Also, the term giant is often used to gloss the word Jotun as an apparent synonym in some translations and academic texts. Jotna are not necessarily notably large and may be described as exceedingly beautiful or as alarmingly grotesque. Interesting is that Jotun comes from the Proto Germanic Etunas and means devour, so they may have quite an appetite. Some deities, such as Skari and Gert, are themselves Jotna, and various well attested deities, such as Odin, are descendants of the Jotuns. Homeland of Jotna is called Jotunheimr, one of the nine worlds of Norse mythology. They are the descendants of the primordial Jotun Ymir, who is the source of all creation. The story of Jotun's origin tells us that while Ymir was sleeping, he would often sweat. Under his left arm there grew a man and a woman. This was the first pair of Jotnas that would populate much of the world. Sometime after the first Jotuns appeared, Abdamla, the great cow, freed a man from the ice by licking salty ice blocks. His name was Buri, the ancestor of Odin. From Jotna, Buri took his wife and gave birth to a son whom they called Bo. Subsequently, Bo married a Jotna daughter named Besla and had three sons, Odin, Vili and Ver. This would make Odin and all the aces that come from him descended from Jotna. When Emir was slain by the sons of Bo, so much blood gushed forth out of his wounds that all the Jotuns drowned, save one, called Bergelmir. He escaped with his wife, and from them come all the future Jotna. They settled in Jotunheim and remember well how Odin, Vili and Ve almost erased them all from existence. The relationship between the Aesir and the Jotna is a complicated and interesting one. The Aesir stole the woman wealth and knowledge. Several of the gods took lovers among the Jotun and some even had children by them, notably Odin with Jord, who became mother of Thor, with Rindr, who gave birth to Vali, and with Gunnlod he had no offspring. By the way, Thor, who hates Jotna, had a son with a female Jotun, Jan Saxa, named Magni. Also, there are tales about Odin who steals the meat of poetry from the giant Sutungr, gained wisdom from Vaftrudnir, and created the world from Ymir's body. And there are a lot of similar stories about interaction between Aesir and Jotun. The Jotun represents the forces of primeval chaos and of untamed, destructive nature. Their defeat by the hands of the gods represents the triumph of culture over nature. But this comes at a price of eternal vigilance. Heimdall perpetually watches the Bifrost Bridge from Asgard to Midgard, and Thor, being too heavy to cross it, often ventures into Jotunheimr to get to Midgard, slaying as many of the giants as he is able on the way. By the way, this clearly does not help with the AC Jotna relations. AC often tell tales about unnamed stupid Jotna that they slay in great numbers. Yet when giants are named and more closely described, they are often given the opposite characteristics. Unbelievably old, they carry wisdom from bygone ages. It is the giants Mimir and Mvafrundnir that Odin seeks out to gain great wisdom. Samyatna even appears minor gods themselves, which can also be said about the Jotun of the sea, Aegir far more connected to the gods than the other Jotna occupying Jotunheim. As such, Jotna are present in most of tales that survive to our times. They may be presented as enemies of the Aesir, full of rage and pride, or as wise and powerful beings equal in power to the denizens of Asgard. And that will be all for today about Jotna of the Norse mythology. I hope you like this story. Let me know what you think about these creatures their relations with Ace and their role in Norse mythology. Come here again, we have a lot of stories to tell.